Mitch Bird asks, is there any benefit to going out with ammonium sulfate and not urea? Absolutely. Very good question. And the answer is absolutely there's benefit. There's absolutely a disadvantage as well. So I'll just, I'm not showing any papers on that. I feel, you know, uh, hesitant to answer questions like this because I, mean, I don't, I've mentioned it before. I don't want people to walk away from this channel in any capacity saying Travis Shattuck said this, so that's why I'm doing it. That is not the intent. I would like for people to be able to go find um, resources in, in the scientific literature on their own. Um, but I'll answer this question. I'll answer, I'll try to answer any question. I just don't want you to walk away with it like this is, you know, the law because I said it. It's, that's not the case. I want you to follow the evidence and, and where the evidence leads is where the evidence leads. But in the case of ammonium sulfate and urea, it's pretty, pretty clear. I mean, the consensus with these two sources is pretty clear. They've been, you know, we've been applying it for decades and decades. So the benefit of urea is, is it's expense. It's, it's not very expensive. And you get you the response that you're looking for from uh, compared to other insources, it's going to get you the response um, equal to or greater than many other insources, assuming you're applying it at the correct rate and the right time and all these things. Um, so that's the benefit of urea. Uh, the benefit of ammonium sulfate over urea is twofold, really. One, if you have a high pH soil or it's floating in the sevens, upper sevens and eights, and that pH is resulting in some sort of turf grass issue, which is critical. I don't care what the pH is. And people, I'm not being facetious. I don't care what the pH is, the soil. If the turf grass looks good and it's acceptable to you, then it's fine. Okay, but if, if the turf grass isn't looking well, it's not responding well, um, it's just not acceptable for you for some reason, and your pH is, say, in the high sevens or, or greater, well, let's say high sevens to like eight, three, eight, four. Once you get up and above eight, eight and a half or so, then it's another issue. But let's say you get, you know, seven, eight, seven, nine, eight, oh, something like that. Then ammonium sulfate is going to help reduce that pH down over time. It's very slow. Well, it's not very slow. I mean, it's, it's slower than sulfur. Um, but you can reduce it and depending on the soil texture and, and so forth, you can reduce the soil pH using ammonium sulfate by a full unit in one year. And I have um, the, the, is it the 79, the 79 Snyder paper shows that. Let me pull that up if I have it here handy. The 79 Snyder paper documents. Let's see if I have that sitting here handy. Snyder 79. Yeah, I was right. 79, son of a gun. Let me go to PD, PD, PDF. PDF. Reduce this down. So for some reason, a lot of people who don't know or salesmen or I don't know what it is, they don't think ammonium sulfate does what, what I say it does. Well, I'm not saying it does. The evidence says it does. Let me see if I can move this over. Okay, so you can kind of see, I can just, yeah, you can kind of see what, yeah, let me just back it down. That, that, that graph is clear enough. I'll just, I'll just reduce it. So the 79 pe um, Snyder paper, which is ridiculous. He, he, just say this, George, Dr. George Snyder is the greatest living turf grass soil scientist bar none. Okay, there, I said it. it it's just the way it is. It, if you don't like it, you know argue it with somebody else because it's going to be extremely difficult for me to be convinced that some other scientist is greater than dr george snyder he is emeritus now he's been retired for over a decade he's great on many many levels he's probably embarrassed that i would even say this about him but it's true so it is what it is um he published his paper in 1979 and what what you'll see here is set 1975 you see uh, as month for those listening i'm looking at a graph with on the x-axis we have months and on the y-axis we have soil ph and it goes october november december january all the way through the months from 1975 to the, to july of 1978 and he was putting this down uh ammonium sulfate you'll see one line and you'll see the other one is calcium nitrate and this was done in South Florida, so we're dealing with a little bit more of a sandy soil. So, you know, I mean, it, does, it will differ. The magnitude change will differ based upon soil texture and so forth. But 
um, when he's when he was applying ammonium sulfate, he's, both soils it was on the same soil, so the soil started a little bit above seven, seven one, seven two, and over the span of three years, actually over the span of one year, so from December of seventy five to December of seventy six, he reduced the pH from seven point one to about five using ammonium sulfate. And of course, the rate's going to man. I can't remember the rate he used on this. But you can greatly reduce the pH of your soil simply by switching your your ammonia your nitrogen source from urea to ammonium sulfate. I'm not going to go into this paper anymore because I don't want to I don't want to distract myself for another two hours going over Snyder's papers, which I could read for I have been reading for decades. Um, so the advantage of ammonium sulfate number one, well, not number one, but one of the advantages over urea is that you can have a profound impact on soil pH. And it doesn't take that long. As you showed show there, Snyder did it in one year, and it maintained that low pH for the next two years. So if your pH is high and the turf grass is not acceptable because it's high, that's to me, that's a critical component, um, then using ammonium sulfate rather than urea would, be, would likely benefit you. Um, the second benefit, which I think has gone unnoticed or un, unrecognized for, well, it's recognized, but it just sort of been a secondary thing. It hasn't really been on the forefront of people's minds for, for several years is, um, the sulfate, uh, use. So ammonium sulfate has sulfate. So, um, excuse me, the, uh, the sulfate never, and I shouldn't say never, but it just generally hasn't been considered to be of great use in turf grass management. I don't know really why, but it is a macronutrient. And throughout the 70s and 80s, we had a lot of sulfur in our soils that was coming down in the rain from our various industrial processes, and we've cleaned that up. And because we've cleaned that up, the sulfur being deposited in rainfall has been reduced. And I can show you some papers from the NADP, from the National, so National Atmospheric Deposition Program, NADP. You can look that up yourself if you want to. Um, that shows the reduction in sulfur de depositions over the last uh, 10 to 20 years. And because we've reduced that, the sulfur in our soil has also been declining. And because the sulfur in the soil is declining, we're starting to see sulfur deficiencies pop up, not just in turf grass, but also in row crops as well. And so when we're applying ammonium sulfate, we're applying a sulfate form, well, the sulfate, as well as the ability to reduce pH if that is so desired in your case. So that's about a five or 10 minute explanation as to why in some cases, ammonium sulfate would be a better option than urea. It's a little bit more expensive than urea, but it provides a reduction in pH. If you don't want a reduction in pH, let's say your pH is four and a half. Someone was in here the other day had a four and a half pH. Well, that's still the situation. Even if you had a sulfur deficiency, I would not be applying ammonium sulfate to a four and a half pH soil that's deficient in sulfur. I'd be applying gypsum or something like that if, if sulfur is the source of your uh, unacceptable turf grass. But um, if your pH is high, then it'll provide that reduction. And it doesn't take that long. You know, If you have heavy clay soils, it'll take a little longer than a year. But that's the benefit of ammonium sulfate over urea.